Hi and welcome to the Damalak Cookery channel. So today I'm going to show you how to make a delicious restaurant quality Chinese curry sauce from scratch. So this particular recipe was given to me by a customer of Damalat's, a Chinese restaurant here in the northwest of the UK and without a doubt my favourite Chinese restaurant so thank you Chu for that. And the bat size that we're going to show you today, so we're a family of four, it kind of lasts us for between three and four months both in the fridge and we also freeze some as well. The spice blend we're going to be using from the Damalat range is a Chinese salt and pepper seasoning. And if you don't have access to the Damalat Chinese salt and pepper seasoning, then to replace that you're going to need about three cloves, three star anise, a large piece of cinnamon stick, about a teaspoon of salt, a tablespoon of sugar and a tablespoon of MSG and also about half a teaspoon of white pepper. As usual a full list of ingredients will be given at the end of the video so let's have a look at those ingredients now and anything else we're going to need for today. So this dish is actually made in two parts. The first part is a seasoned oil and then the second part is a spiced flour. So I'll go through the ingredients in two parts as well. So for our seasoned oil, I've got one litre of good quality vegetable oil, about three sticks of celery which have been chopped, about four decent sized cloves of garlic which have been crushed, a good sized piece of fresh ginger, so about a two inch um, or five centimetre piece chunk of fresh ginger which has been sliced, two large white onions which have been sliced, a Jaffa orange, good sized Jaffa orange again which has been sliced, and 30 grams of the Malat Chinese salt and pepper seasoning. So as I said before, if you're not using the Damalat Chinese salt and pepper seasoning then this is where you'll use the um, whole spices which I mentioned earlier. For the spice flour I have 600 grams of plain flour or all-purpose flour, 200 grams of mild madras curry powder, decent quality mild madras curry powder, 50 grams of turmeric and I'm going to be using 100 grams of creamed coconut. This is a 200 gram block. I'm going to be obviously cutting that in half and using 100 grams of that. So the first thing we want to do then is to make our seasoned oil. So the worst thing you can do, the only way you can really fail with this recipe is to burn either the seasoned oil or the spiced flour. So everything is done on a low heat. So I've just started this pan off on a low heat. I've placed the litre of vegetable oil in the pan. We can start to add our ingredients for the seasoned oil now. It doesn't have to be up to temperature. So in go the onions. Our celery, ginger, garlic and the Malat Chinese salt and pepper seasoning, our sliced orange, so what we want to do now is to just bring this pan up to a very, almost like a gentle simmer where the onion, celery and um, orange just start to release some of the water so you can see it bubbling. And then on a low heat, we want to keep this cooking then at that 
almost like a very gentle simmer for about 20 minutes. Going to stay with the pan as well, just stir it occasionally when it's up to temperature. Just making sure that nothing sticks to the bottom or catches. As I said, the last thing we want to do is to, that anything burns at all in the pan. Okay, so this is that gentle simmer that I was talking about. You don't want it to be any more ferocious than that. So now it's up to temperature, this is where the time starts. So about 20 minutes from now, after stirring it occasionally, this should be all cooked and the oil will then be done. So this has been cooking now for 20 minutes. Most important thing is we haven't burnt anything. I've been stirring this on occasion. The smells coming off this oil are absolutely fantastic. So I know that all of those flavors of all these different ingredients have been fused into that oil. It's exactly what we want. The next thing to do, so I've turned the heat out now completely. I'm going to put this through a sieve and then return the oil back into the pan for the next step. So the next step is to place the flour into a large bowl and then add the dry ingredients. So our mild Madras curry powder. And our turmeric. And just mix those in to make sure that these are well combined before it goes anywhere near our seasoned oil. So once we've mixed all of the dry ingredients together with the flour, I've returned the oil back to the heat on a very low light again. Similar principle as we did with the uh, seasoned oil. And we're just going to cook this flour through. So I'm just adding a little bit at a time. And then mixing that in. Again, over a very, very low heat. Add a bit more. Mix that in and just keep doing this until all of that flour is combined with the oil. So once all of the spiced flour is mixed in, this is the kind of paste that you should end up with. So what I've had to do with this is it wasn't as firm as that, so I've actually added another 50 grams of flour into this just to firm it up a bit. Again, it's not an exact science. It all depends on the size of the um, oranges that you use, the oil and the juice that comes out of that. There's a lot of factors which dictate how firm this um, paste is going to end up. So, as I said, I put an extra 50 grams of plain flour in here just to firm it up a bit. So the next thing, again, just remember that this is on a very low heat, so you have to stir it occasionally. Certainly don't leave it. We now add our cream coconut, so I've just taken the 100 grams and chopped that up into pieces and just scatter that in. And then we just want to stir that in and make sure that melts fully. Once that's all mixed in, I'm then going to be cooking this for between 20 and 30 minutes. I'll probably cook this one for about 30 minutes, just so that all of that flour is cooked through. But it, again, it's so important that you don't let anything burn. It'd be a shame to spoil it at this stage by letting the bottom catch and burn. So after 30 minutes, I'll show you what it looks like. OK, 
Okay, so this curry paste has cooked through now 30 minutes. Again, I've just been stirring it occasionally, bringing it away from the side of the pan just so that it doesn't burn. So the next thing, this is completely optional, it's entirely up to you, which is why I didn't mention it in the ingredients section at the start of the video. But I add a tablespoon of sugar to the paste and mix that in. And it just seems to help that cream coconut have a nice sort of smooth aftertaste. Okay, so once you've cooked the curry paste through, what I like to do is use some of these old takeaway dishes to place the curry paste into. I'll put three in the freezer and one will stay in the fridge. The one in the fridge, the oil will come to the top as it's doing here. Don't take the oil off the top, just mix it through when you're ready to use it because the oil has a lot of the flavour for the curry paste. The other thing I do is I've got a few of these old ice cube trays which we don't use and I place some curry paste in there as well and the reason for that is when the kids want to make their own Chinese curry sauce this is just easier for them to measure it out so the actual ratio of curry paste to water when you're actually making the curry sauce is between four to one and six to one so four parts water to one part curry sauce or if you like it a little bit thinner then six parts water to one part curry sauce so with regard to these ice cube trays two curry cubes if you like is enough for one person and that goes into one cup of water now the curry paste itself because it's got a very high oil content even coming straight from the freezer it's quite soft so with regard to taking the curry cubes out of the ice cube tray just run round with a knife as I've done here and then they'll just come out if you've got one of these takeaway trays and you want a portion of that for a meal take the takeaway tray from the freezer and just simply cut it with a knife and even though it comes straight from the freezer as I said it'll still be quite soft it's almost like ice cream so you'll be able to scoop it out So one thing with this curry paste is it's a lot better if it's allowed to sit. So with regard to the takeaway tray that I'm going to place into the fridge, I'll leave that obviously covered with the lid for two days before I even attempt to use it. And that will allow the flavors within the paste to infuse right through and give a much richer taste to the actual curry sauce itself. So to make our Chinese curry sauce from the curry paste we've made. So I've got a cup of water in a saucepan and I'm just bringing that up to the boil. So a cup of water, about 150 milliliters of water. Place our two curry cubes in there. Just mix that in and then once, once that curry paste is fully mixed in and then go to turn the heat down and simmer this very gently for about 30 minutes the longer you simmer it the better so the minimum I'd say is about 30 minutes all those flavors will then come through the curry sauce will reduce and thicken and be absolutely delicious so we'll come back in 30 minutes and I'll show you exactly what it looks like again through that 30 minute process just stir occasionally so it doesn't catch on the bottom So there you go, restaurant quality Chinese curry sauce 
really easy to do just follow some basic principles the first one is do not burn anything this is cooked at a really low heat so nothing is burnt once you burn something within this curry paste that's it you might as well just throw it away because you'll get a very bitter taste second one is make sure that obviously you blend everything correctly so it's all mixed in cook it through that second stage once the flour is added that spice flour cook it through for 30 minutes it has to be a minimum of 30 minutes again at a really low heat store it for 48 hours before you actually use it because then the flavors will infuse within the paste and when you actually cook with it take some as and when you need it but cook that through as well once it's added to the boiling water cook it through for a minimum of 30 30 minutes and then you'll get the maximum flavor from the paste please subscribe to the channel and as usual if you've enjoyed this particular video hit the like button thank you very much for watching